we're almost done. Just a few more videos to go. This next one is not really an analytic, it's about a thing called frequent item sets. I like it because, as you'll see in the video, it almost makes the solution reflect the actual question that was asked. So enjoy frequent item sets. It's designed to help you solve real problems, not just wander through the syntax. In this session, we're going to do more bits and pieces really finalizing the kind of stuff we've seen in chapter 18 where all our analytic syntax is held. In this last example, we're going to look at frequent item sets, the very bottom item there in the chapter. Frequent item sets is an example of one of the beauties of analytics. One of my favorite things about analytics is the fact that the answer often leads to something which is simpler to the question. We don't have to write massive amounts of SQL to come up with an answer to a simple question. The answer often reflects the question. Let's recall, for example, ListAg. Here is an example of a requirement. Give me a list of employee names within each department sequenced by employee ID. A couple of videos ago, we saw that the answer would look something like this. The beautiful thing about analytics is that the answer is quite close to the actual syntax of the question. It leads you nicely into it. For example, give me a list. There we have ListAg of employee names. The employee name is there. Within each department is expressed as within group, group by department number, sequenced by employee ID is order by emp note. The answer almost looks like the original question. That helps us as developers to build solutions quickly. Frequent item sets is an example of that kind of metaphor. It's best described with an example of a run through because there's a few complicated things here. We're going to conduct a survey of people about what breakfast food they like. So we need to know what demographic they're from. Are they child, teenager, or an adult? We need to know what gender they are, male, female, or they refuse to tell us. And we need to know what cereal brand they're going to choose. And there are some common items we see in the, on the supermarket shelves. So here's our survey table. We're gonna take a random number, custom ID, just so the results are kept anonymous. And we're gonna record the demographic, the gender, and the brand, and whether they hate, love, or think the breakfast cereal is okay. So here is our results of the 12 people we surveyed. We can see that the first person was a child, they were male. When we asked them about Wheaties, they said they hate it. The 10th person was a child, they were female. When we asked them about Cinnamon Crunch, they thought it was okay, and so on for the rest of the rows. Now we need to build a few underlying objects before we can use frequent item set. The first thing I'm doing is transposing the columns into rows so you can see my customer attributes view is breaking down the breakfast food survey table into demographic, brand, rating and gender as rows as opposed to columns. Then I'm creating a simple nested table type because that's a prerequisite for frequent item sets. Now this looks quite complicated but really what we're doing is rather than writing analytics ourselves we are passing in a couple of cursors, select star from customer attributes and select serial name from brands into this package, DBMS Frequent Item Set FI Transactional. And we're effectively telling the database, it's your job to run the necessary analytics and do the necessary processing to come up with some recommendations or some analysis for us. So in this case, when we ran this, we get the following nested table type back rows we can see that Raisin Brand Child Hate was active in 6.27% of all the samples, and so on down the table. How does this get us back to solutions reflecting the question? Well, let's have a look at this requirement. What will my child like for breakfast that is not Cocoa Puffs? That's a simple question. Let's use frequent item sets to work it out. Now these are obviously the core components. Demographic child, they need to like the product and it can't be Cocoa Puffs. Here's a potential answer. Now you might be thinking this doesn't look anything like the requirement, but let's block out the stuff that was actually fixed. That doesn't change once we've come up with this frequent item set. When we look at the predicates, the predicates look almost identical to the question. We're simply saying we want a child, we don't want Cocoa Puffs, and they have, they have to love the product. And we get one result, child, Fruit Loops, love. So we know that the answer to this question is, a child will like Fruit Loops if we're not given the choice of Cocoa Puffs. Now we probably knew that anyway because they're both full of sugar, but you get the idea. You can run these yourselves by clicking on the live SQL link below. In the next session, we've finally come to the end. We're going to wrap up the analytics series and do a quick summary of all the goodies we've seen. Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to keep it simple with SQL. We'll see you all again soon.